You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. All of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. Go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Challenge to change where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to Change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. Several people have approached me, and I thank you for your approach. And you said that Pastor, sometimes you make things look so easy. Do you go through stuff? Can, can, can you tell us how you made it through what you went through? So I want to talk about crisis, which is the, the message that we've been talking about. And, and my wife even approached me. She said, Paul, sometimes you, you got to break this thing down because, you know, you will say uh, replace the thought. But is there anything else? Can you, would you mind sharing some time about what you go through? And I said, sure, honey, I got plenty of those. I got plenty of those. <laughs> so my wife and I and my family have gone through multiple crises this year. But I want to talk about a few situations. But I want you to, to look at those things that I've been teaching you on. Steps in a crisis. Do I want to live or not? Focus on what I have. Access quickly what I don't have. So, so why I say quickly? Why did I say quickly? Because we don't want to dwell on it. 
Because if we dwell on it, we don't want to stay where death is. Death in that situation. We don't want to stay there because when we stay there, we get used to the smell. So we want to get in and get out as quickly as possible, but we want to see what's there. Seek and do, meaning that you, you got to look at the word. Find your, what you're standing on in the word because that's where the freedom is. And then you got to move. So, and, and this is not in order of how it happened, but Larry, the passing of one of my best friends and the architectural worker and designer for three times when we renovated the church building. So that was one. And then when I, 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 I work with his wife, going through the grief process, going through the decision that she would have to make about her husband, because the doctors were saying, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, and there's no way back from this. So we had conversations in person. I would go to the hospital. But we also had conversations on the phone. But see, one of the things that you can do that is okay, and, and one day you'll realize it, it's okay to cry. See, I'll tell people in advance that I'm going to cry as I pray. Because what I'm praying is impacting me as well. But see, I don't have to run from my emotions. I can acknowledge my emotions. And guys, it's a whole lot easier to pray when you already told somebody you're going to cry. Then you're trying to be cool. You, you, you don't have, see, don't go through stuff you don't have to go through. Well, you know, if I pray with her, I better make sure I don't cry. That's my friend, too. That's her husband, but that's my friend. It was emotional. I mean, there was one time I was at work, and I got a call, and she said, we have to make a decision. And, and Megan was at, at the desk, and she heard me just bust out crying. I didn't have to apologize for that. I said, I need to go to Lurie. I need to go to the hospital. But see, I'm crying as I'm going, but I'm praying about what I'm crying. And, and, and see, guys, we just got to be real. See, fear has manifested itself. So I'm just buying that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I'm buying the spirit of fear because the more you look, the more you see fear is here, but it doesn't have to be in us. But we can't later. We got to speak to it. We got to tell it where we want it to go. We got to tell it has no right, no authority in me, in us. See, leaders lead. They don't push. So part of what I've gone through was I knew my church was afraid of all the pandemic stuff that was going on. A leader leads. So I got to show people, look, I'm at church. I'm online. I'm available. I'm seeable. So stop trying to push people and just lead people. We lost another person. Y'all know Doc, right? Some people call her Brenda, but I call her Doc. How did Doc get her name? Because every word I would teach her, or every Sunday I would teach her, or every Thursday, she would go home like, like, like the Berylians did, the Christians, and she would go back and restudy what I taught. And every now and then she would call me and say, Pastor Jay, that thing lined up. Now, it lines up. I ain't get hurt by it. At least I knew she was studying. If there was an error, she was going to find it. And then she got this part about going to the beach spiritually. That her and God, that was their private place. They would go to the beach. Because see, she was a single, I mean, she was at home by herself. So when she would get afraid, her and God would go to the beach. They would walk up and down and just chill out. Then my daughter, Tamika, the passing of her grandfather. That was some intense, they, they were close. They, she, she, she did shopping for them. You know, like, he, he was the type of guy that, you know, he, he, he cut out coupons. Y'all know what coupons are? We don't use coupons now, right? We just show him my phone. But he, he cut out his coupons, and then he would send her to the store, and she had to come back, and he would line it up with the coupons when it got back. And, and they worked the garden together. She got a garden in New York now because of him. So the passing of, of her grandfather. And what would that be like to her? So you got to ask yourself what to do. Because remember, the Holy Spirit will show you what to do. He said, you call her and you talk to her, but you let her, you ask her questions about him. See, see write this down. Let me say it first, then y'all decide how to write. When you come to me with grief, I'm going to ask you questions 
about joy, the funness of that person. So whenever you think about that person, you just won't think grief. You'll think joy. You understand what I'm saying? And, and that's how, you know, like you, you hear me say, I, I use a person, you know, it's like if, if God, God called me the best. So whenever you start, say Paul, I hear the best. And I use that same technique when I'm dealing with people who are grieving. So she started telling me about it. And then she started to laugh about stuff. And then I said, the connection is made. So guys, you do that. Don't, don't, don't try to skate around and not talk about, ask, them about, ask the person questions about their, their dad or their mom or whoever passed so you can get a better understanding of their life. And they'll start to laugh as they start to remember. And those two things will work together. Then our daughter Jay and my son, miscarriage. That was a hard blow, guys. I mean, are you counting enough? I mean, do, do I have enough or do I need to add a whole lot more? Because just being a pastor of a church, you got your stuff. And, and they had a miscarriage. They were believing for this child. Now, what do you say? I talked to them individually, my wife talking to them. But that thing, that, that thing hurt. Y'all, y'all know what it hurt feels like, right? But I come on up here and minister the word because I done gave it to God. And he gave me peace. He's gave me rest. He's gave me his assurance. Paul, I got this. I'm, I'm working on this. I got them. I got them. Then we have my son's grandmother. She passed. And they were close. And I see why they were close. Because they both special. <laughs> now, 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 I'm going to tell you what I mean. I mean, they, they be messing with each other. They, they pick on you. Anybody here know Corey like to pick? Yeah. Well, his grandmother the same way. She liked to pick, man. She never even called me by my name. What she called me? Miss Curly. Yeah, Mr. Curly. <laughs> but name Paul. She didn't care. She didn't apologize for it. Corey am I lying? That's what she called me, man. We in here uh, for uh, a birthday celebration, and she walked over to me. She said, you got any gin? <laughs> Jay, I'm a lie. Were you there? That's it. And she, just, she, she, she would just like that. So, you know, it's like it was easy to counsel him about her because I was talking to her when I'm talking to him. But I asked the Holy Spirit, how do you minister to grief? How do you minister to loss? How do you minister to, to, to crisis? And he'll tell you. But if you look up, th- those things are in there. What I focused on. I focus on what I want. I want these brothers and sisters who are, were dealing with grief to be at peace when they walk away. To be at rest and know that God didn't leave them. In my wife's situation, back pain, it just came on. For six months, she was in pain. You didn't, you didn't notice the way she sat in a chair, that she would get up at a certain times because it hurt to sit. It hurt to move. But at night, there, there was just one time, it was probably the th- her third week into this. No, second week. And I looked at her, and I walked over to her, and I said, honey, I grabbed her hand. And I say, I know you don't talk about what you're feeling, but I want you to know that I know that you're in pain. But I'm standing with you that the God we serve is healing you. We won't talk about this anymore because, see, we go to this place where if he's done it, then I walk in it. Because that's what faith is, right? Faith is an act. I, I can't say that I got this if I'm not moving. And, 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 and y- y'all know what spoon is, right? You're spooning. So I would spoon my wife at night and just speak in tongues until she fell asleep. And, and because she's so respectful, when she would get up to have to just walk through this pain, then she would sneak out of bed. And I just act still, but I'm peeping. But she never missed the ser- service. Never talked about it. Because, see, you got to watch who you talk about things with. If they're not a warrior, they're going to take your side. Y'all understand what I mean by take your side? If sickness is in you, they're going to take the sickness side. Well, you know you're getting old. Some, some doctors, you just want to smack them too. But I mean, you know they tell you what needs to be told. But, you know, it's because of your age. They look at my blood pressure and they say, well, what's wrong with you? You, you don't have high blood pressure, but you got the right age. And she just went through this thing. And she never stopped cooking, never stopped cleaning, never stopped doing what Curly does. But guys, that was tough. That was tough. 
that was tough. I say, ain't no lie to you that being in Christ is not tough. But I don't know. I don't have no children here. I don't know how the hell you make it without him. I, I just got to be real. I don't know how the hell you make it without him. I wouldn't want to be in this world without him. How you do it? You're crawling around, you're begging, you're afraid, you're screaming. I don't have to go through that. I give it to him. I gave her to him. She gives him to me to him. Because I had a knee, got a knee injury. Believing for healing. But guys, every time I walk, it's painful. But if I'm believing to be healed, how can I? What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to do something that you can't do. Do you understand? Y'all take a breath on that one. Making them not even looking at you on this one. <laughs> you got to do something that you can't do to walk in what he's given us. Core belief is the deepest level of thinking, cognition that is available. That you are awake and you are aware. Okay? So I'll ask a person, if they seem like they're having a challenge about something, being honest about something. I say, okay, you got one second to give me an answer, and I ask the question. And, and they're trying to go in the head. It's not in your head, it's in your heart. You already know what you want to do. Okay? It's the absolute statement about ourselves, others, and God. So that's pretty much everybody included in that. Absolute statements. That means there's no verbal in this. This is how you feel. This is how you think. If I'm thinking, I'm going to do. Okay, everybody got it? The title of the message is Identity Crisis. The title of the message. I'm still talking about crisis, right? And let me write this down because, you know, when I mind my own business, big things happen. Write this down. Y'all ready? When we walk away from who, and let me read it out loud first. When we walk away from who God called us to be, we walk into crisis. When we walk away from who God called us to be, we walk into crisis. And what do you guys think that is? Now, I'm in this, you know, Michelle, the, 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 the video person, she has a certain range that I'm supposed to be in. So I'm looking at the door. I can go to the right side of the door and I can go to the left side of the, 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 uh, the door frame. So when I walk out of that, if you're watching me on video, you can't see me because I walked out of the frame of the video. When we walk away from or out of what God called us to, we walk into crisis. So the reason why I call in this identity crisis is I want to expose the crisis we walk ourselves into. Ain't got, don't have nothing to do with God, with Boo, with Sally, with Freddie. Who else? What other names y'all got out there? Okay, Sally Joe, Billy Bob and Sally Joe. We walked out of his wheel into the crisis. But then we want to blame who? Or who else? Satan. Satan. Who else? Other people. Other people. Well, you did. So I, I, I just want you to see yourself. Say real you. So as situations are going on, that identity crisis, am I in it based off how I see it? Y'all can breathe. It's okay. Okay, go, go ahead. Because that's what I wanted. I wanted, because sometimes we think we are in a situation that our belief put us there. So if, I, and I'm not, this is, nobody used it. If I'm hopeless, I am hopeless, then what would I be drawn to? Hopelessness. So credit card paid off, but I'm going to go ahead and spend it up. Because if it's hopeless, then what do I have? No hope. So I just wanted us to see ourselves so that we'll know where we're going. If we're not living in truth, then we have trouble admitting it. So we're going to make it sound okay. And y'all write this one down. I, I, I just, just want to be real nice this Sunday morning. Because I'm going to be hitting y'all soon, okay? Hitting y'all with the truth. Because we're going to deal with this crisis thing, identity crisis. If I believe I'm supposed to get the worst, then what will I get? You can have the best and you'll end up with the worst. 
our thinking creates our experiences. I can only live out of what I think about the situation. This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.